My name's Shaquan, but a lot of people know me by my other name, Mad Skills. I'm an MC. My name is Mad Skills. Now let's make some noise. I'm a DJ. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm a ghostwriter for some of your favorite rappers. I'm not about to tell you who, though. Oh. But most importantly, I'm a hip-hop enthusiast. Hip-hop confessions is raw, unfiltered conversations with my friends revealing things that they didn't like, never knew about, I don't know, or never got into about hip-hop culture. So sit back. Oh, come on, y'all. Turn up the volume. Hip-hop. And listen to hip-hop confessions. Because everybody's got one. Here's a little story that must be told. And it goes a little something like this. this, this, this. What up? world it's your boy mad skills we are back this is my podcast hip-hop confessions where i bring in my friends my industry peers and just musicians rappers comedians djs just all of my folks man and i get them to reveal something uh you know hip-hop related or something you know an unpopular opinion or something that they have a hip-hop confession as you will and right about now i got one of my favorite non-favorite people on the planet um (laughs) This guy right here is, you know him from, uh, you know, from all of his film work, stand-up comedian, you know what I'm saying? Philly boy, you know what I mean? On, on his, you know what I mean? My Philly mm-hmm. boy. Oh, a couple I, porn I know videos. You, a couple, couple porn, porn videos. And, and I know you might think I'm talking about Kevin Hart, but it's not Kevin Hart. <laughs> we, I'm not even going to cap you like that. I got my man Spank Horton in the building, comedian Spank. What's up, bro? What's good, bro? What's up with you? Oh, uh, man, you know me, man. Just, you know what I mean? Trying to connect the dots, man. Good to see right. you, man. Always, always, man. I wanted a comedian extraordinaire, but it's cool. I take comedians. Yeah. Going oh, you're an extraordinaire now. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been in the game for 20 years now, man. I'm old now, so I want all the extra bells and whistles hey, that come with the name You want, now, you want you know? the whole accolade. Yeah, I want all of it. I want all of it. Comedian extraordinaire. There we go. I mean, well, 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 listen, you know, comedy has been good to you. You know what yes. I mean? You're a funny yes. guy. Comedy Appreciate has been you. good to you. From your background, it, it looked like you in somewhere in Calabasas. I'm, I'm gonna just leave it alone. You yeah, definitely yeah, in the backyard. hills. That's my backyard back there. You know what I mean? Little, little hill back there. I yeah. definitely could have. I definitely saw a bobcat. So you definitely somewhere in the mountain. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I love it, man. I love it. How you been, brother? I've been great, man. I've been great, man. We uh revving up for a new tour now. So yeah, man. I'm just excited, man, for this new material that I got that I've been working on, man. It's getting really good. It's getting really good. That's good, man. Um, for those of you, you know, for those of people that might not know you, you are, like I said, you are from Philly. You run with a whole squad of, of Philly Philly comedians. Kevin being the most, you know, the the the, the forefront. But uh, it's mm-hmm. a it's a few of you guys. You know what I'm saying? Like um, uh, Naeem. Naeem. You know what I'm He's from like, Jersey, but he went to school in Philly and lived there for about ten fifteen. So he pretty much Philly. Right. He, he pretty much Philly. It's a whole squad of y'all, man. And you know, I. I I've always followed your career from jump, you know what I'm saying? And and because first of all, you was always a tall ass comedian, so you had to be funny, <laughs> right, right? Right? You know what I'm saying? Right. You you are you are unusually tall, so yeah. it's like even when you're on stage, most people are looking up to you, and even when you're not on stage, a lot of people looking up to you. Right. But when when did the comedy bug bite you? Like when did you realize I, I think I might be funny? I was told all my life from elementary, middle, and not just the way you look. Like, just, you know what I mean? Like, like actually funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just, I've been hearing it since childhood, man. From the neighborhood, elementary school, middle, I was always winning. But see, that's the thing. I was always winning class clown, but I was never the kid that interrupted the class. I was always the kid that made the teacher laugh also. So I, I, right. I knew I had a, a difference in when it, when it came to comedy as a young kid. Uh... It started because I went to the movies to watch Kings of Comedy. And mm-hmm. uh, after I'm leaving the movie theater, I seen a couple of people that I knew. And they, they all said, when you go get on that stage? This was right. year 2000. I'm like, ah, I'm not for it. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm in college. I'm not doing all that. I'm straight. I'm straight. Right. And then uh, I was a theater major at Temple University. And you know, in okay. theater, it's all drama. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, I always brung a funny comical way for the scenes. And you know, I had the people right. laughing. So the professor pulled me to the side and said, man, you have a natural knack for comedy. He said, man, right. that's one of the hardest uh, muscles to have in acting. He said, you need yes. to start doing stand-up and that'll help with you. I said, all right. And I started when I was a junior in college and I never looked back. That's crazy, man. So so a teacher was the mm-hmm. person that, you know what I mean? Like, 
right. it's funny how, you know what I mean, our teachers always see things in us that we didn't. I had an English teacher that told me, she, I remember she told me, stop playing around with them words and take them mm -hmm. serious. And mm -hmm. I was like, later on in my life, I was like, damn, like what she told me really sent me on a, you know, a path to emceeing and rhyming right. and, you know right. what I'm saying? So... You know, I've always said that being a, you know, a former rapper back in the day, like, and a lot of people would be like, yo, like, you know, I know you personally, but you, you, you super kind of private, you kind of chill. Like, I, I didn't think you would be like that. How you just hop on stage in front of 3,000 people and, you know, do your thing. But, you know, at a, at a table full of four, you the quietest <laughs> one. And I'm like, it's just, you know, that's just what it is, man. And I've always felt a parallel universe between comedians and rappers, but, mm -hmm. Because we on stage and we entertaining people. But I've also all, always felt that y'all got it way harder than us because y'all got to keep them laughing. Yes. You know what I'm saying? My biggest so, thing I say to people, y'all have a beat behind y'all. We don't have a beat. If we had a beat, it would help. <laughs> right. Like y'all might come out to a song mm -hmm. and then you got to cut it. And then for the next 30, 30 whatever minutes, however long your set is, Right. You have to keep people laughing. Mm -hmm. And 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 don't it's like it can go left so fast. That's another thing about comedy. It can go left so fast. Two jokes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, this nigga ain't funny. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what we doing here? Yo, bring out the headliner. Yo, yo, boy, yo, boy, trash. Like, where Kevin Hart at? <laughs> right. So it so talk about that, you know. That that dynamic of what all that entails to actually keep people laughing, because y'all business is funny. You in the right. business of funny, right? Right. I feel like I get away with my personality, and Kev said this all the time about me. He always said, "Like, yo, man, you you just," he said, "He said you being so natural with it on stage with your charisma, you get away with a lot of stuff." He said, "Man, sometimes your jokes don't even be funny at all. It's just the way your delivery is and." Mm -hmm. Your facial expression, everything you do around the joke. But I just feel like it's nights when I have bad nights, but I get away with it because I can just easily go and mess with somebody in the crowd or something like that. Right. That's what that, that's what they call comedy cheating right there. You be cheating right there because it's like every, a freestyle. Right. Every great comedian say, yo, keep doing your jokes just to see where it don't work at and see where you can punch it up real quick off the freestyle to make it funnier. But me, mm -hmm. mm -mm, I bail quick. Like, oh, that ain't going away. Hey, come on, man. Your nose bigger than mine. What you, I'm going straight to the crowd. I'm going straight at it. I'm not talking. Because for some reason, when it's real quiet, it's like, ah, I get a little nervous. Qu quiet in a comedy club mm -hmm. is that silence is so loud. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? Like, I've been there before. After a punchline, though. No. After yeah, a punch after line. a punchline, yeah. and if it's you like you just telling the story, you good because they listening. Because they listen, but they waiting for the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> you don't hit that home run. Oh my god! Damn, yo, it's it's so it's un it's it's like a it's a touchy feely ass job, man. Y'all mm -hmm. are y'all are brave as hell to take it on, man. I I I commend y'all. I appreciate it, man. Because I, I could it. never, bro. <laughs> I could never. I got a I got a friend of mine, um, a comedian. Named Russell Peters. Mm -hmm. um, I, know, I know Russ. And he's like, he's like big in like Canada, right? Mm -hmm. So I remember I hung around with him a couple times and didn't really realize how big he was. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So my man said, nah, bro, to to like Indian people, he like he like oh, yeah. Martin to us. Yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so we I remember we we got cool. We go out to LA one time and he was staying in Studio City. And it's me, you know, I was rolling with Jeff at the time, Jazzy Jeff, mm -hmm. and a couple of us, you know what I'm saying, a couple, couple of the homies, and we stayed all in this crib. We had this big crib in Studio City. So we all get up. We went to the grocery store. We making breakfast or whatever. I'm like, yo, I'm making waffles. We got bacon and eggs cooking, you know what I mean? We all on the home. We about, we about to take a hike later on, you know what I mean? He come downstairs, and he just started going in on the photographer ball. Like just mm -hmm. just going in on we all dying like we all in there you know what I mean ball short slippers tees and just dying laughing and he start telling us these stories and shit and I remember maybe like a month later mm -hmm. I go to a comedy show that he had I just pulled up I was like yo I'm gonna pull up on you tonight he's like all right I put you on the list plus one blah 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 I pull up 
and I'm watching his comedy set, and he doing the same the same skits mm. and the same jokes that he did that morning at breakfast, and I was like. Oh, he was testing out his material on what? us. <laughs> Damn, I didn't even like he was so slick with it that we right. didn't even know that Realize, he was just yeah. testing his material. Right. And I was like, "Damn, that's probably is that how the greats work?" You know what I'm saying? Well, I guess I'm not great. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz y'all go to a comedy, you go to a comedy club to work out your material. Right. Right. Soon like if me like let's say this conversation we having right now. If something sparked in my head, ooh, that's a good premise. I write it down, and then I'm like, I got to get on stage right now to see what I can do with this. That's how I do it. It's mm -hmm. hard for me to try to give it to one or two people that's in, the, that's in the room with me. Don't get me wrong. It's been times where I've been telling a story, everybody laugh. I'm going to put that on stage. That's a good one. That's a good right. one right there. I've done that, but I, I didn't. All right, let me try this joke on these guys, see if they laugh real quick. Hey, guys. So I was walking <laughs> right. down the street. and uh, Right. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. That's crazy, man. Some comedians had that gift mm -hmm. to even to work their material out on people without For sure. even knowing For sure. that, you know what I'm saying, that they're being worked on. That's that's insane to me. Comedy, man, it, it's a like I said, y'all in the funny business, man. I I, you know, sometimes when I go down to uh I, I, I go down to the to the Benny Hines on Encino and mm -hmm. when I'm on Ventura, I see the uh the Heartbeat Productions. Okay. Building okay. or whatever. And I'm like, damn, mm -hmm. Kev done got a whole building right there. Like, that's dope. And, you know, I would see Kev's name on stuff like Dave and, you know, the laugh, the, the LOL network and, and mm -hmm. shit like that. And I'm like, damn, like, he funny really is a business for right. him. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, he done broke down every entity, man, from radio to podcast to talk show to uh, a LOL streaming service. Right. Uh, he's just every... Every asset he can get from comedy, he make a lane for it and just run with it. Right, smart. Just man. run with it. Yeah, very smart. smart. Very smart. Very, That's why very... I say he's a genius. A lot of people just say, "Man, Kev's a genius." I know he ain't. Shut up. But now, as I'm starting mm -hmm. to really look, I'm like, "Oh, he is. My boy is. Goddamn, he's right. good at it." Yeah, nah, man. And it, and it's good to be around people that you know inspire you and push you to be the best as well. You know, and, for and sure. you get to watch them go through the process that they. That they going through, you know what I'm saying? So it, the great, it's dope. the great thing I learned from Kev is have a great time, but also network while you having that great time. If you're around somebody, that's mm -hmm. that's what I was bad at. Like for example, Will Packer used to be around all the time when Kev first started doing movies and stuff like that. Right, I was just always let's take a shot, Willie, Willie P or whatever. I was giving him a nickname. Let's take a right. shot, let's drink. Oh, what's up? Let's do this. Let's do that. That was it. But I've been around Kev where he was around the head of. Uh, Comedy Central. They, we in the back drinking uh, and mm -hmm. talking. The next you know you hear like, yeah, man, remember the show that I pissed you? It was this and that. I know why I messed up. Yeah, because if I did this and did that, and it's like, yeah, that you, that, you might have something there. He networking. Yeah. He networking in the middle of having a good time. That's what I learned from him. That's what I learned. Right. That's a that's that's a dope analogy, man. If mm -hmm. anybody listening, man, sometimes in the middle of having a good time. Mm -hmm. Network too, because you never know what that opportunity could right. Present but make it a smooth transition. transition. Don't make it. Don't, don't just it walk up like, right. yo, man, I got a movie. I want you to <laughs> listen, bro. Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Here, here's my hip hop confession. This is the mm -hmm. fun. This is one of the funniest things ever. I'm working with Will Smith, mm -hmm. and from through the connection to Jazzy Jeff, I'm working with Will Smith, right? And. I had this song that I used to play for the homies, and every time I played the song for the homies, everybody would say the same thing. Like I would stop the song in the middle because mm -hmm. it's just one long verse; it wasn't no hooks or nothing. I right. stopped the song in the middle and be like, "I'm gonna play the next one." They'd be like, "Nah, nah, hold up, hold up. I want, I want to find out what happened." What, what, what? Then that was crazy. That story was getting crazy. So I'm like, "Damn!" I play the whole song. I get to the end of the song, and they will always be like, "Yo, skills, that shit play out like a movie." Like I was, I was locked. I was listening. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Damn, okay." Like, I might have a movie idea. So I went out and I started buying, like, scripts of movies that I love. Like, mm -hmm. you know, Friday, Boys in the Hood, just so I could read what a script looked like. Right. A shooting script and then a regular reading script. Bought all these scripts downtown New York off of a street corner. Dude was just selling reprinted scripts. And I was just Scarface. Yes. I'm just buying them and shit. So I found out how to write a script. I'm in the studio one day. And Will like, yo, man, what you working on, Scales? And I was like, well, yo, actually, I want to play you this song. 
know what I'm saying? Um, he was like, all right, cool, because we working on music. We ain't working mm-hmm. on that movie related. We working on right. music. This was right when he right when he was still rapping. I was working on an album called Lost and Found. Right. And I play him the song. And he listens to the song. Song four minutes. So you really got to be keyed in to listen to this whole thing. Four minutes, no hook. So I go, I get to the end of the song, and he was like, he's like, yo, that was good. He was like, yo, you should. That should be a film. And mm. I, and my my eyes lit up and I'm like, oh, I'm about to get a movie. <laughs> so he goes, yo, that should be a film. And he ain't even looking at me. He just looking down. Right. And I said, yeah, man. So I was thinking like, you know, shooting it and, and getting a crew together, you know what I'm saying? And getting it done and like just maybe just blocking out some time. And I just, I just want to shoot it, man. I want to get it done. And he goes, yeah, and when you do that, I want to see it. That's dope. <laughs> Hold up. This ain't this ain't go the way I just thought it was gonna right. go. I thought this nigga was gonna help me make a movie. Mm-hmm. He just said oh, after, after you make the movie, I the wanna movie. see it. So mm-hmm. boom, I don't think nothing else about it. I, I go back to VA, you know what I'm saying? I come back out there in like two, three months. I don't see him for a while. And I go to the I am legend premiere, I think. Go to the I Am Legend premiere. I see him on the red carpet. He like, Skilly, yo. I'm like, what up? He like, what's up with that movie? And I was like, oh, uh, yeah, 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 man. I'm still working on it, trying to get it together. Da, 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 da. Later, six months later, Jazzy Jeff get married. I see him at Jazzy Jeff wedding. Mm. He like, Skills, what's up with that movie, yo? <laughs> and I'm like, damn. Like, and, and right then I looked at, he looked at me and I was like, I said, he going to think I'm a bullshitter. Mm-hmm. And, and, and one thing I learned about being around him yeah. is if you a bullshitter, you don't stay around too oh, no. long. For sure. Like it's, he got people around him that if he says, yo, I, I think I want to try to do a show on the moon. Somebody better be like. Well, I'm gonna get on the phone with NASA and uh, mm-hmm. make a call and see. Make but if but if you the person in the room that go, <clears throat> yo, you can't do you can't do no show on the moon, right? You probably gonna get fired. Oh yeah, for sure. Because he don't sure. like people around him that that will doubt the dream before mm-hmm. it even manifests itself. Because there's right. plenty of people that thought I, I wanna I wanna make a device that I can call my mom, but my mom in New Jersey and I'm in Florida. You can't do that, right? Like right. everybody got told you can't. That's not possible. Right. Of course. So. In my mind, I was like, I got to make this movie, and I don't care if he the only nigga that see it, but I got to make this movie. I make the movie, get the movie made. I shot it in L.A. and Lincoln Heights in like three days. It was short. It wasn't a, mm-hmm. wasn't a feature. It was a right. short. Next time I see him, I'm ready. We had another movie premiere. We had we had the, at the Man's, Man's Chinese Theater on, mm-hmm. on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. And he goes, I'm waiting for him to ask me. Right. He said, yo, Skills, what's up with that movie, man? Damn, come on, yo. And I said, nah, I'm in pre-pro. That nigga said, pre-pro? I said, yeah. He said, who you been around? <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm in pre-pro. I shot it in Lincoln Heights maybe like two months ago. You know what I'm saying? We just color, color correcting it, color grading it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, okay. That's he said, well, yo, send it to me. So I remember once, I, I remember I, I had a, the, the link for it. Private link. I sent it to him, and I never forget. He watched it on his birthday, mm-hmm. and he watched it with Jada. And he sent me an email back, and he was like, "Yo, that's how you do it. If you ever step into the film game with your first foot in the door, this is how you do it. This was mm-hmm. dope. Like I knew how it was going to end, but Jada didn't. You right. know what I'm saying? He was like, and she was even like, "Yo, that was good. He was like, "Yo, great work. Like you mm-hmm. killed this shit. And I, that was it. Like right. you know what I'm saying? I put it in some film festivals and this, that, and mm-hmm. third. But I was like, he pushed me. Yeah. To do it because I knew if I saw him again and he said, yo, no. you ain't going to never do that <laughs> shit. I'm going to be put in a whole nother folder that I yeah. don't want to be in. Right. And that was, you know, that was a clear thing with him, man. Like, so that's my hip hop confession, man. Will Smith doubted me on making a, a, a movie and I, mm-hmm. I had to spend my own money and make that shit. Wow. No, that's, that's dope as hell right there. Yeah. My hip hop so confessions. Listen, there's no What's yours? <laughs> but but being that we here, we we in the right. thick of it now. This mm-hmm. show is called Hip Hop Confession, so I need mm-hmm. to know Spank. 
What yeah. is your hip hop confession? Ah, uh, I got a few, but uh, the one that sticks. Let's get out, to the let's get to the gritty one. Yeah, let's get to the gritty one. Uh, so you know when you uh, uh roll with a rock star, uh, aka Kevin Hart, you know we like to do mm -hmm. fancy dinners and stuff like that, and you know he right. invite his celebrity friends who's ever in town or whatever. So we actually in Miami right. one weekend. So mm -hmm. uh, Fabulous was in town, Drake was in town. Uh, I want to say a couple more, but I just can't remember right now. So uh, we all go to dinner. It might have been Prime or one of them restaurants. I can't remember which one. Mm -hmm. So we all at the table eating, blah, blah, blah. Usually with me, out of all the Plastic Cup boys, I guess I get a stronger connection with the other celebrities because I always end up like talking to them. We exchange numbers. We talk to each other from here and there. Mm -hmm. Whenever they have parties, if I'm in town, I, I pull up and everything. Pull up. Yeah. So like you got Fab, man, Fab tight. Me and Drake was cool. We don't got each other's numbers, but whenever he's like around or something, I'll pull up. He always acknowledges and show love or whatever. Right. And uh, usually when we see each other, he always makes jokes. So uh, Drake. Uh, one, yeah, Drake. Drake always makes jokes. So one okay. time we in uh, Toronto and uh, mm -hmm. we had All-Star Weekend or whatever. And uh, somebody had a party. I don't know. It was one of the NBA players. One of the NBA legends had a party. We all at the party. Right. And I'm cool with the legend. My friend LeBron. It was a LeBron party. I'm okay. cool with LeBron. So, King uh, James. I, so I'm starving. I'm all like, yo, man, ain't no food. You ain't got no food up in there, man. So bro, like, yo, go see Randy. Yeah, I mean, he'll take you to the kitchen and get you something. All right, bet. Run into Randy. Oh, what up, bro? Bro, I said, come get some to eat. And, yeah, come on. I got you. Went in and got a plate. So I walked in back to the party, though. I'm the only guy walking around with, with a food. plate, though. <laughs> food. So Drake walks up. Come on, man. What are you doing, man? What, what, what? We here to mingle and have a good time, drink. You in here with a goddamn barbecue plate in your hand, <laughs> right. walking around the party. Come on, man. You can't be this, right. this don't black be that guy. Come on. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. So uh, fast forward, we in Miami. I just want to give you a little pre-story of how me and Drake relationship is. We always, you know, crack and right. with each other. Right. So we in Miami. We had dinner. And uh, we just get to talking. So Drake gets to go in and on me. I'm like, oh, here we go. Trying to, trying to out joke the comedian. Right. Like, Drake, don't do that. This, this is what I do. You might want to mess with another plastic cup boy that don't get on stage and don't have his comedy muscle. You know what I'm saying? Right. So he's still going in on me. So I start coming back at him. Mind you, this is the time when Drake was beefing with Meek Mill. Mm, so touchy, touchy, touchy time. Touchy, touchy time. time in, I in shouldn't even be at the table with this guy right now, but you know, because you from Philly, so yes, it's like, yes. yeah, Philly, ooh, ooh. yeah, meet your man. Mm -hmm. I had to be in a club listening to back to back like three, four times, just standing there with the mean mug because <laughs> it's my guy. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So when he started going in on me, that clicked in my head like, okay, you think you'll get two Philly guys out of here? Nah. I don't go nah, like that. I'm not bro. the Philly. Mm -mm. I'm not the mm -mm. Philly guy that you're mm -mm. gonna do this to. So I started snapping back. You know, like some white Tims and probably like a fleece sweater or something like that. You know, you all sound like some, some Drake yeah, wear some white yeah, Tims, some right, Snow right. White Tims. <laughs> Sounds real Drakey. So I'm going in on the table laughing, everybody having a good time or whatever. So I'm next to Fab. So I, I go put the tweet out. So I shows Fab like yo. He said yo, come on, what are you doing, man? Because you tweets, active on Twitter. Yes, you're very, very active, active on Twitter. Very active. A little too much sometimes. I got to yes. go back sometimes. So uh, the tweet said, I tweeted Meek Mill saying, yo, Meek, I got you, bro. I just came at Drake. We won. We back on top. And then I put, I think I posted a picture of Drake and also with the outfit. <laughs> oh, shit. So Meek didn't retweet it, but uh, <coughs> Coon, his role manager, retweeted it. <laughs> Coon mm -hmm. saw it hit me and started laughing or whatever. So it got back to Drake while we was at dinner, and Drake came to the side to me and said, hey, man, come on, man. Delete that picture, man. De de delete that tweet. I'm like, why? Man, we joking. We having a good time. Nah, come on, man. You're going too far with it, man. Delete the tweet, man. I'm like, ah, oh, see? You want to joke with the comedian, but now the comedian go too far. You don't want to go to that level. See? Come on, man. The, the joke then left Prime 112. Yeah, yeah. The joke ain't at dinner no more. <laughs> the joke is into the Twitter. It's in Black Twitterverse. And that's what it was. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. So to this day, I didn't tweet. I didn't delete that tweet. It's still on. I it's mean, you've been tweeting so much. It's yeah, like, so much. Shit, it's gonna be hard to find. A nigga would have to go back to 2012 to find that. But <laughs> that's hilarious. That's, he came over. What, he came over and was like, "Yo, I need you to delete that." Yeah, I need you to delete that. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm playing around. You stupid, y'all. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I need you to delete that. I said, man, I'm not deleting nothing. It's my Twitter. It's my How Twitter. you going to tell me delete my... This my Twitter. Ain't my fault you had that outfit on. 
Right. You chose that outfit and then chose to talk trash to me. Like, come on, man. It's me, bro. What are you doing? You know, I, I go wow. too far. Everybody, All my friends know I go too far, so he should have known. Yeah, you a habitual line stepper. Yeah, I am. I am. I love that step, though. I love that line. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's I ain't so gonna funny that. Ain't to me. That. Yeah, he said it. God he God. said it. <laughs> yeah, you, you know what? Like, for me, I, I like comedy like that because... It's it's you laughing at the shit that you shouldn't be laughing at. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the shit that you shouldn't be laughing at. Um, I remember, and just a quick side story, I mean, I don't know who said it. I can't remember his name, but I was at a comedy show, mm-hmm. and a dude was talking about his girl, and he was like, yeah, you know, my girl got pregnant, man. You know what I'm saying? She, she was pregnant. She told me she was pregnant. And I was like, yo, I ain't ready for no kid. Like, I ain't about, we can't do this. And we had a whole back and forth. And she was like, well, I always wanted to be a mom. And I was like, man, like, nah, baby, baby this ain't the time, baby. Like, you, we about to fuck both our lives up. This ain't the time. He was like, so needless to say, y'all, you know, I had to take that ride. I took her down to the, to the Yami, you know what I'm saying, to get the, get the Yami taken care of. It's like, so she in there, you know, I go to Chick-fil-A, you know what I'm saying, come back with my number one. I'm, I'm eating, I'm in the parking lot. And she come in the car, you know what I'm saying? And she sit down. I'm like, you, you all right, babe? And she like, yo, let's just go. Like, let's just go. Like, I, I could tell. I was like, damn. So I cut on the radio, you know what I'm saying? I'm playing G-Unit. You know what I mean? And she like, she cut the radio off. I said, yo, what you doing? She like, yo, I don't, I don't want to hear all of that murder and death and killing. Like, I don't want to hear that. And he said, well, I mean, tech, it's only one murderer in the car. <laughs> Like I said, yo, that's the most fucked up joke I ever heard in my life. And uh, it's like you laughing, mean. right? You laughing at it, but you know you shouldn't be. Shouldn't be, yeah. You know what I mean? Shout out to Corey. It's Holcomb, those type. Man. Yes, Corey Shout Holcomb. Corey yes, Holcomb, that's Corey Holcomb. Guy. That's one of my faves, bro. Hab- my habitual faves. line step. Yes, for sure. For sure. That's the thing. I'm a line stepper on Twitter, but on stage I'm not. That's weird to me. That's, yeah, it's weird to me too. Sometimes, like, why well, don't? Because I'm the I'm the drunk uncle on stage. That's what everybody always try to compare me to. I'm the drunk uncle right. just having fun with everybody when I'm right. on stage. I'm the friendly guy on stage, but I don't be stepping the line on Twitter. Maybe, maybe I need to start transferring a little a little line stepping on stage. Now, if if I'm snapping with somebody, I do the line stepping. But right. on my jokes, my jokes don't go there. My jokes don't go there for some reason. But I got that's one that's crazy. a little, it's getting there. I'm building it up now. It's getting there. It's getting there. It's a goodie, too. It's about a three-year-old. So, it's goodie. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So let me ask you, um, and I've always wondered this about, you know, um, about jokes and comedians. Because mm-hmm. like I said, we kind of got a parallel universe as far as rappers. So, you know, for me, you know, it's always uh, taboo. To, to to say a line that somebody said or take a line that somebody said. And um, you know, with jokes, it's like if another comedian take your joke, mm-hmm. cause back in the day before YouTube and all that shit, before you couldn't take your cameras into a, a concert, you know what I'm saying? I could go to Philly and say a freestyle on Cosmic Kev and then right. go to DC the next day and say the same freestyle, get the same response, the phone mm-hmm. lines lighting up, cause they ain't heard it. Right, but now, now, as soon as you, you know, you you spit it, it's on the mm-hmm. internet. Okay, you know what I mean? So up. you can't once you post it, it's gone. So with jokes, like with with jokes in general, what is what is the taboo of taking another comedian's joke? You know what I'm saying? You get you get labeled as a joke thief. You get and that's not joking. good. Is that's, that's not good in the circuit? That's not good. Cause see now in the rap in the rap game, you could take yeah. somebody whole verse. You know what right. I mean? Concept. I got niggas that's and stole the rap up and just ran. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so it's like in in comedy, you're labeled as a joke thief. And yeah. You might not get booked or something. Well, you will still get booked because you know comedy clubs they ain't worried about that, but. You will definitely get blackballed from comedians because comedians like a lot of your work you get from other comedians. Like a comedian that comes mm-hmm. to you, hey Spank man, I just did this show over. Let me plug you with the promoter. You won't get none right. of that no more. Yeah, you'll definitely won't right. get none of that. Right, you won't but, get the alley oops. 
Right, right. But you'll still get the, your mainstream comedy clubs and stuff like that. But you won't get them promoters to do theaters and comedy clubs and stuff like that on their own. But yeah, it's, it's definitely bad. It's bad. Because then you got comedians that don't want to work around you. Like if you come into the room, ah, oh, here come the joke thief. Here come, I'm not yeah, going he going to steal. Yeah, he going to steal yep. my shit. It's and go say it in Ontario. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And What's that's what so they funny try to is, do. Yeah, like I, I get it. I remember watching, I don't know if you remember, it was a show that James James Corden had, had ex, uh, executive produced, and he would mm-hmm. have celebrities battle rap each other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I you remember know what I'm saying? But they actually had it was Duel Bars. of the Mic or something, mm-hmm. and it was Method Man and, and uh, Justin Bieber's wife, Haley, Haley Bieber, was, mm-hmm. was hosting it. And it was, you know, it was T Pain versus. Yeah, you know I mean, one of the Backstreet Boys or some shit. Da, 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 right. da. So I will never forget this shit. One day they had Marlon Wayans, mm. and Jay Farrow, oh, wow. on that joint, right? And Jay Farrow from Virginia. He from like yeah. down there where Pharrell them from. I got a story so, about him too, but go ahead. So Jay Farrow and Marlon Wayans <laughs> is you know battling. You know they you know of course I I would know that the teleprompter right behind the person they reading it off the screen or whatever, mm. but. Not, nonetheless, it's still funny because it's like, right. yo, your last movie flopped, and then it's like, yeah. oh shit, you know, you you used to seeing that shit. And Marlon Wayans told, told, uh, he told Jay Farrow like, yeah, that's why you ain't last on SNL or something. Da 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 da. Now I know that all of the jokes are pre. That's right. cool. Like, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. you gonna poke fun? I am gonna poke fun at white chicks. You know, da 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 da. Whatever. Mm-hmm. So they going back and forth, and. Jay Farrow, it's like a switch just clicked. And that nigga was looking, like Marlon was saying his lines, and he was looking at Marlon like, because Jay Farrow used to rap. So right. he looking at the nigga like, I'm about to body on some smack DVD, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm about to body this nigga. So he he goes, he he starts rapping, and he says something, da 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 he says something, da 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 He At the end of the joint, he's like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And that And that's... He said, like, like you a hoe. He said, something, something, and that's and that goes down for that joke you stole, bitch. Mm. And then Marlon looked like, oh, this nigga for real. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then Marlon looking like, but he also, it, I could see his head turn like, yo, what joke he talking about? Like, I ain't right. stole no joke from this nigga. Like, what he talking about? Like, the, and, and Jay Farrell looking like, like I've been wanting to get that off for years, nigga. Yeah, like it right. wasn't scripted. <laughs> and Marlon Wayans is like, wow. Like, like y'all brought me out here for this. For like it, right. and it aired, bro. It aired mm. on TV. Like, look that shit up. I'm a YouTuber. I'm a YouTuber. Yo, Marlon Wayans was like, it's some bullshit. You know how <laughs> then you just start getting into man, you a pussy, nigga. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you that's the only thing you can start turning into. Right, right. But Jay Farrell was hot about, over a joke. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That, that he thought, I guess he thought Marlon stole it or something. Right. This then the third, like, and it, it, was, it was crazy, man. It was crazy. It's, it's tough when it comes to uh, people, you feel like they took your joke. Like, I, I got claimed, somebody said I took his joke. It was a cell phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's an easy, simple, you're in a relationship. What do you do with your cell phone if you're out here in these streets still? You're yeah, gonna you try to put hide. it down. Yeah, you're gonna, you don't you're gonna want it to be seen. Down. You don't want it to ring on. You have it on vibrate. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's basic one, two, three. It was nothing creative about it. Right. I had now I had some creative jokes to go with it that he didn't have, but he still. But he said like, you oh. got the basis from him. Yes, I'm like, bro, no, come on, man. So we had a little right. talk, but we cool now though. But I'm like, come on, man, it's a sell. So what? What was the? What was the Jay Farrell story though? Oh. I met him when he first started in Virginia at uh, the Norfolk Comedy Club. What's that? What's that? That's funny the, uh, Bone. The Funny Bone. The Funny Bone. Yeah. Well, Me we got K- two comedy clubs here, one in Richmond, one down 757. They both called the Funny Bone. Though. Yeah. So we did the one in Richmond first. I think that's the show you probably came to. Yeah, I came I came to see y'all. You was yeah. opening for Kev. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then I think we went to Norfolk. It's like a little run you do. Mm-hmm. We went to Norfolk, but we went in a day early because... Uh, uh, I remember they do the, like Apollo night or something like that. Yeah, said, yeah, the open, said, open mic yeah, type open shit. Open mic night. Yeah. I said, let's go a day early. We can see the, you know, the new guys, stuff like that. All right, man, let's do right. it. So we go in the night early. Jay Farrell gets on stage. I promise you, he rips. Like, I don't know if this is the first time 
or fifth time, but he was still fresh. Right. Rips. I'm talking rips. I'm like, yo, young guy funny, man. So we talked to him, me, Kevin, had a good convo. I exchanged numbers. We would talk there and there. Every three months, he hit me, yo, just checking on you, what's going on, huh? Yo, right, I'm opening right. up for uh, Charlie Murphy right now. Rest in peace, Charlie Murphy. I'm opening up for yes. Charlie Murphy. Yo, good shit. Keep doing your thing. To this day, bro, every time he see me, he pull me to the side trying to have a little quick powwow with me. Yo. So he, right. he keeping his head straight. I mean, you can tell he a VA dude, because most VA dudes I've met is cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. J Ski, you, to everybody yeah. I've met in VA is always tight with me. So I just want to give him a shout out, man. Shout out to my boy. Yeah, Keith nah, bro. I, got, I definitely got to get him on here. Um, I, We were supposed to do it last year, but then, you know, pandemic shit had shit a little crazy. The panty? <laughs> yeah, the panty. <laughs> So so before before we wrap it up because I, mm-hmm. I just I never really asked nobody this um but I definitely want to ask you I ain't got I got like two dollars that's all I got on me like two dollars it ain't no money spent okay like, okay stop my, bad. It. my bad my bad my I, bad I I, I I look at that backyard nigga you living you living on the side of a mountain nigga I already <laughs> know stop playing with me but top five comedians because I I never really had a com a comedian on the show so I want to ask mm-hmm. who is your top five of comedy and why. Tough man, I got like it's hard to do a top five because I feel like and you ain't got to do them in the order, but right, just give I feel me like five that inspire you. In different generations, comedians did different things for me, right? So it's hard for me to have five, but I'm gonna go for it. Of okay. course, Eddie Murphy, of course, I was a young kid down. still in his material, going to school with it. Talking about that's probably yeah. why I was getting class clown. I was using most of his material. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, he was a joke thief then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a joke okay, thief. Yeah, then. I figured. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> started yeah. early. Started early. <laughs> so Listening. definitely Eddie, because I love the way he was like a superstar, man. He was he wasn't just a comedian. Like when you see right. Eddie, he wants because he was in movies. He was a rock star. He was, he was making songs. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So he was like, he was just like Nigga the made a song called In Your Butt. <laughs> <laughs> Made a song called In Your Butt and Put Your Mouth on Me with Michael Jackson. Remember that shit? I don't remember put that Put your what? mouth. You don't remember Put Your Mouth on Me by Eddie Murphy? Yo, I got to go look no, that up No, okay. Again. Eddie Murphy had a song called Put Your Mouth on Me. Mm-hmm. He had a song called What's Up With You mm-hmm. with, with Michael. I think Michael was in the video. He had a mm-hmm. song called Only. He had a comedy album where he had the rose in his hair. Yeah, yeah. I remember that album. It was a song on there, it was a song on there called In the Butt. Hilarious. And Eddie just was saying shit that he wanted you to put in his butt. It was like, put me in your butt. Put a washing machine in your butt. Put a pair of jeans in your butt. Stay clean in your butt. You don't remember that? <laughs> no, man. Eddie probably don't remember that either, but it happened. <laughs> Eddie was wild. Yo, yo, Eddie was wild. And, and anytime you get to that level of, of superstardom and you can yeah. do whatever the fuck what? you want to do. Huh. God. Like that's that's a Eddie was doing whatever the fuck he wanted to do, and I love sure. that about I love that about him as a comedian. So okay, right. Eddie Murphy, Eddie. Then I will say it's no order. Okay, no so order. I will say Bernie Mac because when I went to go see Kings of Comedy, that definitely sparked me. And then mm-hmm. hearing people say, "Yo, you need to get on stage," that definitely that was my first spark. Mind you, I was with I known Kev before comedy. His neighborhood and my neighborhood is right next to each other. I used mm-hmm. to always be in his neighborhood playing basketball. That's how I met him. Got cool. And uh, he Kevin had, he Hart played basketball. Yeah, Kevin Hart actually played. Well, tried. He tried to play. That basketball. small. Yeah, that small. That small. He was fast. Kev like, I'm not gonna lie. He was fast. He like three one. Yeah, <laughs> easily. <laughs> easily. So I re- I was there when Kev saying, "Yo, I want to do comedy," but I, it di- that didn't spark me. Right. And even when he started like progressing, I'm like, "Yo, you doing your thing?" Every time you come back to Philly, you doing your thing. Congrats on everything. So then when I had started, that's when he found out. I ain't never tell him. I mean, I found, he found out. He said, yo, man, why you didn't tell me? I said, man, I want you to hear so I know the, for sure that I'm funny. I don't want to use you as a friend to try to get on. So I remember like, that. In, in the, I remember that in his book. I got his book his book back here on, back on the shelf somewhere, uh, okay. Laugh at My okay. Pain. I remember right. when he said that in the book mm-hmm. about you. Right. So that's when he just started putting me on. Like, I got you. I said, bet. So <sighs> Bernie. Eddie. Eddie. All these two syllable name ass comedians. <laughs> Damon Wayans, man. Damon Wayans. Damon Wayans. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if people remember, but at one point, I remember that. Did, I remember that stand up uh, special he had. He did a stand up special. He did Last Boy Scout. Uh, he was doing Living Color, Homie the Clown, like all that. I looked at him as yo, this guy. 
He killed uh, in the he killed in living color. Yeah, for sure, for sure. That's the three. Who else we got here? See, current now, Dave Chappelle's just killing so much. Yeah. I gotta put Dave in there. Yeah, Dave he, Chappelle. He's, he's top tier. Yeah, and he's that and line he different. Stuff, man. He different, yes. man. And and he make you he, he he's a he's a I call him a comedic thinker. For real. You know sure. what I'm saying? He thinks it all out. And the nigga just gifted. Like, you mm-hmm. could tell he just gifted. He just go on stage without knowing what he's going to talk about and just go. Right, like, and just like, I ain't mm. I ain't got no notes. I ain't got right. shit. I, I'm mm. just got a microphone and people. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm and he ends up with a special. I'm going to talk about my day. <laughs> That's a gift. <laughs> yes, for sure. Uh, What's that, four? That's four. You need one more. Everybody gonna say you can't say Kevin Hart blah blah blah, but I've watched when he couldn't sell out a comedy club, man, to mm-hmm. him selling out a football stadium of fifty five thousand. So that really yeah. motivated the hell out of me. So I will put him as not miscellaneous, but as a he's he's there. <laughs> right, I get and it. Then a, and then the last, he don't get as much as props. That, well, he get all the props that he should, but he had a bunch of run ins and all that. But man. Cat Williams, man. Mm-hmm. Cat Williams, when yeah. it comes to stand up, yeah. he's a funny guy, man. Yeah. Like naturally, he make you think everything. He's he's a funny guy. If he didn't have all them run ins, he'd definitely uh, be on top. It, not yeah. saying that he's not on top now, but I don't want people thinking. Right. No, I, uh, I think I, I was. I just saw a flyer for him the other day. Uh, yeah, so I he know he's doing shows. Yeah, I know he's he getting, getting back, back out there. there. And mm-hmm. and it's good to see him get back out there, you know, For because sure. I know I know comedy is and stand up is something that he loves. So yeah. regardless of whatever you know he does, or, you know, I know that him being on stage in front of people mm-hmm. with a microphone is something that he loves to do, and that's when you get to see the natural him. So yep. I, you know, at, at that point, I want anybody to be able to do that. Oh, that's yeah. that's a good lineup, man. I can't yeah. even be mad. You know what I'm saying? That's my five, man. That's my five. I get Let's it. Get and it. <laughs> for me, for me, you know. When you look at Eddie and you look at Kev, you know what I'm saying, and you look at some of the similarities of the careers of, mm-hmm. like you said, like yo, he couldn't go from Kev couldn't sell out a comedy show to going mm-hmm. out selling fifty five thousand seaters, like you know what I'm saying, like that's that's insane. And Kev and don't really, Kev, it. yeah, you've that's seen the thing. it. I've and, seen it. And Kev don't really like he don't really talk his yeah you know I mean, nah, he but doesn't. he really could. Yes, he really yes. could. He will. He done I'm gonna a lot. Another, I'm gonna give him to like fifty. When he turns fifty, if people still tweeting BS to him, he, he gonna finally he gonna finally <laughs> let it out. He gonna finally let it out. You know what? I'm done with this. Let me tell y'all what I did in my life. Let me tell you what the fuck I did. <laughs> and and before we go, um, mm-hmm. me and you, like you said, you're active on Twitter, and um, we, me and you, have always had interactions on Twitter. I always mm-hmm. be fucking with you. I always give you the business. You give it to me right back. But one of the funniest things that has ever coincired between us on social media was I remember one day I was in the crib and I got a new Apple TV and I'm pulling up all these apps and shit. All the I'm pulling of course I'm pulling up all the free shit first. Mm-hmm. I want to know what's free. I found Apple Music, all that shit, Netflix, all that shit. Cool. What's the free shit? What's the free and shit? I, and everybody knows. Every, anybody that knows me, they know I'm a, I'm a throwback guy. I like shit that remind me of my childhood. So I sit up and watch old Jefferson's episodes. You know what I mean? Different strokes, mm-hmm. shit like that. You know what I mean? New York Undercover. Mm-hmm. So it was this app called Two B T V T U B I Two B T V, and they had Fantasy mm-hmm. Island. So I'm looking at Fantasy Islands. And I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling. They got all these D-list ass movies and shit. <laughs> and I see a picture of fucking Spank, comedian Spank, standing there, looking up in the sky with a with a girl over his shoulder. And the, the title of the movie said, Sucker for Love. And I remember I said, oh, that nigga made a D-list movie? Like, I'm never going to let him forget this. So I screenshotted it, screenshotted the, um, the, uh, the, 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 the movie cover, the movie mm-hmm. poster, and I just had it in the tuck. And I was like, one day, Spank going to say something that this picture is going to be the perfect response for. And mm-hmm. I remember one day, I think you said, because you know how you, uh, a chick will say something, she'd be like, yo, I just feel like, you know, 
I, I'm, you know, I'm deserving of love and, you know, I need somebody that's going to be in my corner and you'll find a picture of her half butt naked in front of a mirror and be like, do you really? <laughs> like, that's the kind of shit you tweet. <laughs> like, so I said, I'm going to get this nigga one day. <laughs> so then one day I can't remember what you tweeted, but you tweeted something that the picture was perfect. And mm -hmm. I was like, I said, like this, and you, you, and the funny thing about you is when somebody gets you, you mm -hmm. don't just reply, you retweet it to oh, your yeah. followers too. You I be like, yo, yeah. you be like, Scales, you gotta chill, Scales. Come on now. <laughs> Come on, Scales. I, I was young. That's what you said. And then the funny part is, I kept, I've been using that picture. It's saved in my cool. phone for the, the past, past year. Two, like almost two years, whole <laughs> pandemic. Yo, you will tweet. Yo, LeBron needs some help, man. Like Lakers gotta do better. Yo, Westbrook wilding, and mm -hmm. I, I'll put wilding like like him, and it'll be your picture. <laughs> and you be like, "Come on, skills. I'm talking about the game, dog. Come on, dog. Jesus, like let it go. Like I, uh, I'm a habitual, never let it go. Right. I already knew that was gonna be the death of me between me and you. I already knew. I said, oh, he's yeah. going to use this one. He's going to yeah. use this one. And I ain't mad at you. That's a good one to you. And I remember somebody said, yo, is that Spank? I said, yeah. yo, I sent him the link. I said, yo, it's on 2B TV. It's called Sucker for Love. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. Go look at that shit. Mm. And you mm. was like, come on, Skills. Like, yo, you got to calm down. You got too much time on your hands. I'm going to tell you what's worse than that. So, you know, my friends, they all like to get on me. We say it on the radio. They all say, yo, yo I got to watch Tubi, Sucker for Love, Spank. Uh, it was like 2011. I did I did the movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. Probably shot it with like 25000 I think I got to pay like $2,000 or whatever. Right. So uh, I go over to Wayne's house, Wayne the Plastic Cowboy, uh, one of the brand managers for Kev from Philly also. I go to Wayne's house. We in there. We all talking. You know what I mean? I'm silly. I'm loud. <laughs> I'm going in on people. I probably went in on Wayne, the host. Went on him. This is his right. house. I'm going in on him. Messing with his lady, his dog. I just, I'm just going on everybody. I'm having a fun time. I'm drinking. Right. I'm going in. Mm -hmm. Wayne went and put on that movie. And I tell <laughs> you, he shut it down. I said, yo, man, cut it off. Man. Cut it off. I mean, it was music playing. He cut the music <laughs> off. He got like five TVs. He turned them all wow. out. Oh, my goodness, yo. yo That's the I said, worst. yo. You won, bro. You won. I will you never got say it, anything bro. to you. Right. Again. Let me live. You got it, fam. That's hilarious. Oh, my God. Man. That was my father's worst, worst one right there. Then you right there, brother. You right there. Mm -hmm. Listen, my man, friends, and I'm I tell keep, you. My friends. Yeah, I'm going to keep doing it. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I'm petty. I'm probably one of the pettiest people you will ever meet. I'm, I'm petty Pendergrass. Oh, I'm with it. you, brother. I'm with you. Well, listen, man. I want to thank you, man, for um pulling up. Of course. You know, you you know, I, I I've been wanting to get you on here for a minute. You the first comedian on the show, actually. Okay, so, there we go. That's what I'm talking you know what I'm about. Saying? Um, if you could, claps. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? If you could um probably holler at Kevin and, and and get Kev to do the next show. You know what I'm saying? Because network, you right. know, network. We yeah, network. You the, and, there you go. There yeah, you go. I'll you know definitely mean? tell him. I, I know you live on the side of a mountain, but it's cool. You know what I'm saying? I understand it. I get it. But plus, I when I promote it, I'm pretty sure he'll see it when I promote it. He'll probably hit me. Yo, what's that? Yeah, just me and Skills. He got his own podcast. You got to do it. Yeah, no, yeah, I could be on the I could be on the LOL network. We can make that. We happen. definitely interview you on a radio show for sure. That's that's, that's, I, that's easy. Uh, yeah. Let's that's do easy it. Right there. You, you got a good is. mic. Hey, yo. You got Good background. You, good. <laughs> you got a good mic. Well, yo, let the people know, man, where they can follow you, where they can get you at, you know what I'm saying, before we roll out. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, Spank Horton, man, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook. I'm really on Facebook. I just go on there and try to promote my shows, to be honest with you. And I think my friends and fans on there realize that. They say, yo, you don't never say nothing to us, but post your <laughs> uh, shows. You're flyer. You don't never say hi. <laughs> but uh, I'm not on TikTok. Everybody keep telling me you're on TikTok. I'm not on TikTok. Uh, I feel like I'm too old for that. Uh, I would say, I would say, Mm -hmm. At least go on TikTok and get your name and just take mm -hmm. your name. Well, Comedian Spanko, right. at Comedian Spanko, however you want to do it. Go right. on TikTok and at least just grab your name so don't mm -hmm. nobody else get that. Don't get that. That's true, too. You know what I mean? True. I would That's go true. do that. But trust me, bro. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I, I felt the same way you do. Mm -hmm. And TikTok yeah. is hilarious. That's what I'm hearing. That's what I'm hearing. I'm going to send you a couple things yeah. that you're going to be like, Nah, skills. This funny as shit. Like we we right. we some creative people, man. 
Right. And mm-hmm. it's it's amazing what we could do with a phone and some what? backdrops and a microphone. Some of the funniest shit I've seen mm-hmm. in the past, d- definitely during pandemic, was on mm-hmm. TikTok. Because wow. I, like I said, I, somebody told me, I just went to go grab my screen name. Like, let me go get Skills mm-hmm. BA for somebody who right. this joint, trying to charge me for it later or whatever. Let me just grab my name. Mm-hmm. Yo, just scrolling is some of the funniest people funniest. in the world on TikTok. Wow. Well, I'm going to send you some joints. All right, for I sure. I'll check it out. Jones. I know uh, a couple people on there, like, uh, reenact my jokes on there. Cause, uh, yeah, because uh, you can take the audio. Be, yeah, they be adding me. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's dope. That's dope as hell. Okay. And yeah, they didn't even know even, who I was. <laughs> right, right. Like, like one of the biggest things on there uh, last year was the was the girl from Philly. The uh, yo, why you being weird to me? Oh yeah, yeah, huh? you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. she was just talking. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, yo, full got your hand on frontal. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, and you could tell she a Philly girl. As soon as she opened her mouth, man, right. so it's a lot of Philly people on there too making noise. I'm gonna send you a for couple sure. links for sure. All right, for sure. I can't wait to see them drinks. I might, I might sign on, baby. Listen, we're going we gonna to get you right. But check it out, y'all. This your boy, Mad Skills. And this is Spank over here dropping all his shit because yeah. he's doing too much. Yeah. And this has been Hip Hop Confessions, man. We up out of here. You already know what it is. Because everybody got y'all. one. I stole that from LL. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a little story that must be told. And it goes a little something like this. this, this, this.